Hello and welcome to High School Playoff Soccer on WOSN. Alongside Mitch Monfort, I'm Evan Skilleter, and today we are in Ottoville for a matchup between the Kaleida Lady Wildcats and the Columbus Grove Lady Bulldogs. And we're to a point, Mitch, where one mistake could mean the game. Kaleida comes into this evening wearing the white uniforms with a record of 9-5-4 and four in the last game of the regular season. They did beat this Columbus Grove team 2-0. And they start with Cameron Recker, Addie Miller, Alex Gardner, Nicole Siebenek, Ali Coleman, Kaylin Bachrath, Lauren Schulte, Audra Hovest, Gabrielle Brinkman, Lauren Laudick, and in goal, Cassidy Hipsher. Columbus Grove, on the other hand, 11-6-1. and one. That tie was against Bluffton in their last game of conference play, a chance to win the conference title, but falling short due to that draw. They start with Lauren Ockmoody, Jane Roeder, Alyssa Cook, Allison Thompson, Ruth Myers, Peyton Horman, Ella Dotson, Devaney Pringle, Carson Garmader, and Lainey Zarsi between goal, or in the goal, excuse me, Ariane Hefner. Columbus Grove with an early free kick. Chance to perhaps put this into the box. Beautiful day for soccer as this one is popped into the box but gets past everyone. A dangerous play there. And we actually might have an early card in this one. And we will? Yes, we will. Looks like we're definitely going to get a card here. Uh, great attack on the goal, but, uh, you know, just decided to play the goalie and, and not lay off when the, there was an opportunity to pull off. So in high school, when you do get a yellow card, you have to exit at least only for a moment. And you'll see the offender back at the substitute spot to come back in. Now, I do apologize in advance. These Columbus Grove numbers relatively hard to see from up here. A little glare on the window. Dark numbers on dark jerseys. But we will get you the names as much as we can this evening. 3 o'clock start after a very beautiful week of weather. And Today, no different. That ball into the box, and Kaleida able to clear, but not far enough. Carson Garmater with it. She has it knocked away, and it eventually finds Addie Miller in white as it's knocked out of play by Pingle. Kaleida trying to work up the right side, putting a little pressure on the back line of Columbus Grove. Jade Roeder sends it back into play. Here's Lauren Akhmoudi, the Leading scorer for this Columbus Grove team does a lot of work all over the pitch. She'll play up top, she'll play midfield. Every now and then she'll drop back and play defense. Yes, sir. What a utility player they have. And that was a great service she played through uh, to the uh, forward on the opposite side. The throw goes out of play. So now we'll get the substitution to bring the starter back on. Still trying to get a number on her. Uh, there we go, number 22, so that's Ella Dotson. Now ball sent into the box, cleared away once again by Kaleida. And here's the first shot of the game by Ella Dotson, who just checked back in. No problem for the goalkeeper, Hipshire. Yes, yeah, she did an excellent job turning around and uh, you know, being able to put that ball on, on frame there. S see if they can continue to keep this ball trapped in. Uh, the uh, Wildcats uh, half. Ball free in the middle of the field. Touch forward toward the final third. Both teams trying to get possession. Columbus Grove with it. Nice move inside. That's Pingle. Pingle dribbles right into the two defenders. Has it taken away. Now maybe a chance to counter. Definitely a nice little lapping run coming here. and Great first touch there, right to goal. Addie Miller cut off nicely by Roeder. Roeder playing left back for Columbus Grove and able to track back and knock this out of play. So a throw for Kaleida, final third. Edge of the box with Cameron Recker. Here's the cross. Cleared away, but right to Recker. Maybe a chance for another cross. Puts it in front of goal, the shot, it's wide. 
Well done in the buildup for Kaleida, but Audrehovis shot ultimately going wide and scoreboard still reads 0-0. Zero, zero. That was a fantastic play. They got the ball right where they wanted. Uh, Goey did an excellent job applying pressure along with the defender to make that a very tough shot, but well done for Kaleida. Your scoreboard tonight, by the way, sponsored by Charles River in Spencerville. Appreciate their continued support of high school sports broadcast here at WOSN. Kaleida working it forward down the left side. Still on side as they travel into the box. Ball laid back. Still some trouble, but it is cleared out of the box. Here's Cameron Recker, and Recker ultimately loses possession. Achmoody pings it forward, and it goes out of play. It's Dotson trying to chase it down. Extra ball came onto the field, so they blow it dead, and now we resume. Nice tackle in midfield. Kaleida comes out with the ball. Up the right side, good job keeping it in play. That was Lauren Laudick. That was a beautiful touch ball, was going out of play and just kept it in right to her own teammate. Uh, set up that transition for them. So far the Collider pressure, any time Columbus Grove touches the ball has been immense. That ball touched out by the Wildcats, so Columbus Grove will throw on the side, but only after a substitution, two new Bulldogs checking in. Lauren Halker and somebody else but again <laughs> kind of tough from over here yes sir it's very tough to read those numbers like you said the dark on the dark is very tough uh, the sieves coming in right now ball cleared out by Kaleida but it's actually off of Columbus Grove and the referee wants them to redo it yeah I think he's he didn't like the maybe location of the throw. She, she walked up the line a little bit too far and went in to come back and do it again. Ball touched into play. Bulldogs drop into space and try to send it up the right side, but it goes wide and out of play. Again, the Bulldogs 11-6-1 this season. Had a chance at at least a share of the Northwest Conference title against Bluffton in their last conference game. Bluffton able to come back from behind and get the points necessary to win the title outright. So Columbus Grove certainly a bit of a chip on their shoulder falling short in the conference. They'll have a throw from near the corner flag. As they're taking that throw, and if you look at uh, Collider, they've got five defenders around two girls, and it's just boggling everything up. It's very tough for uh, Columbus Grove to get possession, do what they want to do with all that pressure on them. It's certainly no surprise to an opponent of Columbus Grove that Lauren Ockmoody is the one you need to, to key on, at least primarily. So every time you see her around the ball, there's usually a few defenders there as well, as Mitch just alluded to. Now Kaleida trying to counter. Addie Miller with it at her feet, carrying down the left side. Closed off nicely by the Columbus Grove defense, but out for a Kaleida throw. Ball sent into Cameron Recker. Recker gives it back to Miller. Now across. This will be at the edge of the box. Some work to do for the Columbus Grove defense. Knocked away briefly by or from Audra Hovist. Now on the right with Laudick. Goes out of play. Good defense by Columbus Grove. Jade Rader once again. Roeder, excuse me. Now Hovis trying to find space to cross. She does and ultimately goes behind. And they call corner, so the Columbus Grove keeper actually touched it before it went over the line. Yes, evidently that ball was not all the way out. and uh, she, she touched it, and therefore they got a corner kick, and I feel like this does exactly what Kaleida needs, a nice little opportunity play set piece in. See what happens. Cross over everyone's head, almost off the head of Lauren Laudick toward goal, but it goes over. And I think we actually have a handball called inside the box against Kaleida. So Columbus Grove will get a free kick. Area 
and Hefner has her goal kick taken away. Kaleida at the edge of their final third. Audra Hovis trying to battle and has it taken away. That was a huge opportunity right there. They almost had got Kaleida caught up in a nice little transition, but great defense to take that ball away. To really set her team up going forward. Possession back and forth. Kaleida tries to play it to the back line. It's taken away, but maybe a chance for Kaleida to get there. Goes out of play. The referee says last touch by the Wildcats. Throw into Ock Moody. You see some of that footwork there, but again, closed off by two defenders. Sure, that might be a focal point of their defensive strategy today is a double teamer and make her uncomfortable with as many bodies around her as possible anytime she touches the ball. Quick punt from the goalkeeper for Kaleida, Cassidy Hipshire. Now Kaleida working through the midfield again. Possession back and forth. Now on the far side, Kaleida with possession. It's Gabrielle Brinkman, but it's taken away by the Bulldog defense. Right now, it looks like Kaleida is content with taking the ball out wide and trying to find a little bit of space uh, for some matchups. Bulldogs working in. Here's Akmudi, a little bit of space. Now the pass and offside flag up. Shot no good anyway, but. It was offside as number 22, Ella Dotson, just a step in behind the defense. But not a bad play, a nice build up there from Columbus Grove, maybe just a step late on the pass. Yes, yeah, so we talked about that pressure and they did an excellent job applying pressure. However, she was able to slip that pass behind them and uh, really gave them opportunity right from the goal. Uh, but fortunate for Clyda, she was uh, offside. Now ball in the mid, Addie Miller. Miller, a touch pass to Schulte. That's Lauren Schulte. Schulte trying a diagonal, takes a touch, but it's, well, it is kept in play. As Columbus Grove able to take it away. Lauren Laudick again doing a nice job on that side, keeping the ball in. Definitely, they're really uh, emphasizing getting the ball wide and see what they can do, if they can beat them in that space or one-on-one, -on -one, and uh, hopefully that'll open up the middle of the pitch for them. Dotson able to send it up to Ock Moody. Now she's off to the races. This is where she can be dangerous. Nice job clearing it away by Ali Coleman. You know, Akmudi definitely has the foot skills, but her speed is also deadly. It's a huge weapon for her. How many times this season have we seen her push, put, tip the ball in behind the defense and just use that speed to run on? I'm sure she did it to us quite a bit when we played against her this year, but that defender saw that and was, took that angle right away and said, your speed might be greater than mine, but my angle is better than yours. So kind of nullified that speed, and that's great coaching uh, by the Clyde staff. Throw goes into the box and nodded out of play for a corner to Columbus Grove, their first corner of the match. It's Dotson who will put it down for the Bulldogs as five Lady Dogs head into the box. Back post, header toward goal. Hipshire knocks it away, but a great ball and a great chance for the Bulldogs. That was a fantastic position by the goalie, moving her feet laterally. Didn't necessarily have to catch the ball, just make sure that ball didn't uh, you know, make its way in. That was well done by the goalie. Uh, stay in front of that ball and uh, keep it out of the net. And it looks like we've got an issue back in the goal box, so we will step aside. The score still 0-0 on the Charles River scoreboard. 27-22 to go here in the first half. Tonight's scoreboard is sponsored by Charles River in Spencerville. The premier pharmaceutical and chemical research facility in Northwest Ohio is hiring. Visit jobs.criver.com to apply today. Welcome back to Ottoville, where the injured goalkeeper Cassidy Hipshire has made her way to the sideline. Not really in the business of speculating, but perhaps cleaning up some blood on the field. And in her absence, Lauren Schulte. We'll head into goal. 
Schulte sends this one back into play. So they are working on cleaning Hipshire up over on the side. But in the meantime, Bulldogs trying to take advantage of the backup goalkeeper. Bulldogs have it in midfield. Devaney Pingle. Now Kaleida trying to bring it down. Ultimately at the feet of Audra Hovis, but taken away. That was an excellent job sewing up play. Those letter teammates come up and uh, you make that overlapping run for her. Now Bella Schrader gets around the defense on the far side. Schrader still with possession, working up that left. Now cleared away for a collided throw. And the goalkeeper, Hipsher, at the spot, ready to check in. So she is back. Lauren Schulte will make way for her. Schulte is a starting midfielder, so imagine she'll take that goalkeeper jersey off and head into the game. But in the meantime, Kaleida sends a pass, a throw in, excuse me, into the box. It's knocked away. Still 0-0 on that Charles River scoreboard. Just under 26 minutes to play in the first half. Clyde has to feel good getting their goalie back after that. You know, you'd hate to see a starter go out and, you know, move things around. So that's fantastic to get her back in the game. And, you know, hopefully she doesn't miss a beat and uh, everything goes the way they need. Now Ock Moody boots it back into the box. Hipshire comes up no problem and picks it up. Ball sent to midfield, brought down by Kaleida. Good pass ahead, finds Bella Schrader. Schrader sends it in behind the defense off the back of her player, her teammate, Alex Gardner. Now Gardner tries to take a touch outside, but plays it out of bounds. It was a fantastic pass out to the left wing and just give her an opportunity one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, she'd like to get that ball back again, I'm sure, and maybe get a little better touch more towards the end line, but fantastic service. Kaleida takes it back into the box, cleared away. Nice job by Allison Thompson of Columbus Grove sliding over to send it out. Kaleida with the throw. Able to clear, but only as far as a Kaleida midfielder. That's Caitlin Bockrath. Bockrath sends it toward goal, but it's scooped up by Hefner. So both teams generating a few chances. Ah, Moody with a nice header behind her. Yeah, she had a beautiful flick right there. And, uh, you know, again, as we watch her get the ball, see, what, see how many players they push towards her. Nice little one-two. Oh, unlucky. But, I mean, her ability to flick that ball is, uh, makes it an opportunity for somebody else to make that run and get on the end of it. Grove will throw from just in front of the Autoville dugout. Looking for space, Columbus Grove suffocating on that far side. But Wildcats do a nice job getting it away. Nice footwork, calm by Allison Thompson. I was just beginning to think that might be dangerous, but uh, obviously she knows better than I do. That was a fantastic cutback to give herself a little opportunity there. Yeah, she didn't look at all like she was phased either. Yeah, I might have been more nervous up oh, here. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Some substitutes check in. That is Lauren Schulte back into the game for Kaleida. She'll give Lauren Laudick a break. Both teams fighting for possession on that far side. A lot of congestion in midfield right now. There's three Wildcats all around the ball. Yes, sir. They're well contained over there right now on that side. And the ball's kind of ping-ponging right now until somebody takes possession here and see what happens, see if they can kind of control the game a little bit. Can they find feet, you know, and opportunities to score? Both 
Bulldogs on the far side block a pass and they ultimately get possession back and a throw in a relatively dangerous spot. Sure, just a little bit of pressure right there. Maybe it keeps this ball trapped in. Like we just talked about, uh, controlling the game. So a little hustle plays like that, that'll do it for you. Cross goes wide out for a goal kick and a substitute checking in. 21.56 on the clock. Still 0-0 in this playoff soccer match between two Putnam County rivals. Hawk Moody pulled it down, but ran right into the defense, had it taken away. Popped up by Kaleida, brought down, but Columbus Grove on it. Here's Ock Moody, dangerous spot. Ock Moody tries the shot, blocked nicely by Siebenek. That was fantastic defense. Way to take away that strong foot as she turned and went for the shot. Way to keep herself between her and the, and the goal and just did an excellent job. First touch set up everything for Ock Moody. It was beautiful, but defense prevailed that time. A lot of times that's the key for a defender too, is not necessarily dispossessing the ball, but staying between your man and the goal. Almost like basketball, right? Stay between your man and the basket. If you just make that person shoot into you or dribble into you, oftentimes you take it away, right, Coach? Yeah, definitely. And a lot of times when uh, we preach that when we try to take the ball away, we put ourselves in a bad position. And that was textbook defense. And you, you love to see that at this level. The ball made its way over the line. And there's the signal. So the yeah, Columbus Grove <laughs> throw. I think the referee, the AR, dropped his flag. He left it behind him a few yards. I was a little confused, <laughs> and then I realized what happened. <laughs> I think Columbus Grove, they can move this ball to the left oh, the way we're going here. They have uh, space out here to operate. There it is. Spoken like a coach. <laughs> ball into the edge of the box, brought down. Dotson. And the referee said it hit her hand, so yes. free kick. Got her with a handball right there, but again, just finding that space. Kind of opens it up a little bit. Move that defense a little bit. Figure out which angles or avenue you want to approach. But if they keep doing that, I think they'll get some good uh, opportunities out of that. Good free kick taken. Columbus Grove knocks it into midfield. Knocked down or brought down by Addie Miller. Back with the Bulldogs. Dribbling through midfield. Trying to send it behind the defense. And ultimately they do, but no one there as Hipshire slides over to grab it. Miss Grove doing a nice job winning some of those 50-50 balls. Yes, indeed. And what that's done for them is keep the Kaleida trapped in their half right now. So get a little momentum, a little build up to where we can just slowly, progressively bring that ball up. Um, you know, just winning those 50-50 balls really changes how, the, how you play the game. Bulldogs with it. It's Ock Moody. Ock Moody over to Dotson, but taken away. Lida trying to string some possession together, but Columbus Grove there. Physical play on the far side. Referee says a little too much. A little too much, but as a coach, you kind of live with that. You know, Kaleida uh, was going backwards, maybe, maybe in the square of her back, but you'll be okay with that, I feel like. Once again, Columbus Grove stepping up, taking it away from Kaleida. Wildcats haven't had the ball too much in their final third as of late. Now they're trying to work it to the left. And referee set offside. That's Ooh, a I, tough call. I think what he was saying is the, the head ref is saying she came from offsides back onside, which I didn't get to see that, but... Uh, that was a great pass that led up to that opportunity right there. Another one goes out of play. Columbus Grove will have a throw. Some substitutes coming into the game, though, as Lauren Laudick replaces Lauren Schulte. Sun starting to come down a little bit and work into our line of sight. 
can't complain about the weather today, no, though. No, I mean, no. God, good gracious, late October, beautiful day for some soccer. This might have been the best full October week I've been a part of. <laughs> I cannot agree more. Columbus Grove with it, trying to work it outside. Pass cut out, but the Bulldogs still in possession. Only briefly, though, cleared away by Kaleida. Now out of play, so another throw for the Bulldogs on the far side this time. Devaney Pingle. Sends it forward, brought down by Auk Moody. She sends it off the defender and out for a Grove throw. Again, we keep talking about this. Right now, Columbus Grove is keeping the ball trapped in the side of the half, which is giving them, you know, opportunities to kind of do what they want. Where can they probe to attack this defense that Kaleida's, uh, that Kaleida's providing here? Nice job by Hipshire coming out, knocking the ball away. It's one of those where she made up her mind early, and you tell your goalkeepers, if you make up your mind, you do not switch it. You come out for the ball. And right there, a lot of traffic, a lot of congestion, but she held her ground, came out, and sent it out. You definitely want your goalie to be – they have to be able to play on that edge. You know, if you, they make the decision that you're, they're fully committed to it, and that's, that could be the difference between getting a goal scored and uh, stopping the ball like we saw right there. Bulldogs well, still trying to get something positive in front of the goal. They've been able to work into that final third, but once they get there, there hasn't been space for them to work. Definitely, and I feel like that's Kaleida's strategy. We're going to clog this up when you get down here, uh, and we're going to take that away. And I think Columbus Grove would possibly do better if they can transition to a little quick play maybe. But Kaleida's excellent at getting behind the ball with numbers. And just being disruptive too. They're not doing a whole lot. They're just being in the right spot. And like you said, creating congestion and just making it tough to maneuver. Sure, and we talked about that earlier. We're not, they're not trying to win the ball. We're just kind of, I like to coach it, being annoying to the other team. There you and, go. And make it hard for them to operate what they want to do. Um, and so far, it's working well for them. Kaleida trying to work it up the left side. Ball cleared out. This is Cam Record. Record into the box, but. No problem for Hefner coming off the line and grabbing it. You know, let's see if uh, Kaleida can keep a trap down or is it Columbus Grove going to control it now here? And possession right now, so there we go. Kaleida bringing it back and, uh, you know, trying to trap it in. But like we said earlier, they're kind of content with Columbus Grove on the ball. Uh, just, you know, not necessarily trying to take the ball away. Auk moved with it here. She was closed off by Addie Miller. Now the Bulldogs put it into the box as I have a fly flying to my mouth. Sorry about <laughs> that. That was a fantastic ball. I uh, slipped in behind uh, the uh, main defender, but the sweeper for Kaleida did an excellent job covering that. And this one goes over the back line for a goal kick. Substitute checking in. We'll step aside momentarily. We'll be right back. With just over 13 minutes to go here in Ottaville. Scoreboard is brought to you by Charles River in Spencerville. The premier pharmaceutical and chemical research facility in Northwest Ohio is hiring. Visit jobs.criver.com to apply today. Welcome back to Ottoville. The score on that scoreboard still 0-0 between Kaleida and Columbus Grove in this high school playoff matchup. Kaleida trying to get something positive in front of the Columbus Grove goal. But so far, really, the story for both teams has been getting into the final third and then stalling out due to great defense. Yes, indeed. And I feel like that we might have an issue with that today. Uh, once you get to these levels here, at the top level of you know, any division, you find yourself harder to score goals. 
And, and, so, and it's been honestly great keeper play on both sides that we saw. Um, you know, Clyde's goalies did an excellent job of coming out on our line multiple times. And Columbus Grove's goalie came out again and put pressure uh, that for the Clyde's good opportunity that went wide right. Substitute checking in here. So Columbus Grove will send it back into play. Jade Roeder sends it in for Carson Garmotter. Garmotter tries to switch sides, but ends up with Lauren Schulte. Now Kaleida will send a substitute in. It's Alex Gardner checking back in giving Addie Miller a break. Ball popped up in front of the goal. Some work for Hipshire to do, but ultimately no Bulldogs there to make her job hard. Great distribution right here. She can play the ball wide to feet. Maybe they can transition out of their half. The ball stays in play. Columbus Grove cuts it off. Maybe a chance to work forward, some space on the left side, but they try to force a pass into the teeth of the defense. The ball taken away. Yes, unfortunately, if that ball, if she gets that cleanly, I feel like there might have been some space on the other side of the field that she could have played to, and just unlucky, you know, you know hopefully you keep working on that again, you know, keeping the ball trapped, applying pressure. Uh, give, your, give your forward some opportunities. Fight for possession, brought down by Gabrielle Brinkman. Pardon me. That's 23 for Grove. Pingle. Now Kaleida trying to counter. They sent a pass up the left. Defense there. Kaleida's throw goes right off their own head, and Columbus Grove will get a toss. Kind of a stalemate here, and it, it's it's fun to watch as a coach. You have uh, both teams trying to move the ball forward, but they're they're getting, you know, kind of caught up in the other team's defense. Can they find a way to find that space behind them out on, on the outside, and you know maybe the game will open up a little bit more for them here. Kaleida trying to space the field, sending it up the right side, knocked out of play, and it's a Columbus Grove throw. Hawk Moody had a chance to get behind the defense, but didn't quite put it where she wanted it. So it's closed off and taken away by Nicole Siebenek. And again, I, they know the threat that she poses, and she got a nice opportunity there, taken away immediately uh, by the defender as she she took that uh, took it away, knowing that she was a, a threat going forward. A lot of substitutions here. So we have a few more new players checking in. Kaleida back into play. Nine minutes to play in the first half. Ball still on that far side. I'll just work it up the left. That throw doesn't even get back into play. Well, eventually we'll get it away from that far side. <laughs> yes. See if they can find some feet in the middle of the field here. You know, like you said, the ball continuously is going up that side. We have some opportunities. Maybe we could, you know, do a ball reversal here through the defense or uh, the center uh, back right there is wide open there. We can, there we go. That's going to open up some space for him there. Some contact, but not enough to draw a whistle. Referee right on it. It is a contact sport. It's what some people forget. Some contact is allowed. Yes, indeed. And, uh, it can be, get very physical, but if, if done well or correctly, it, it, you'd love to see it in the game. Kaleida with the throw. We'll do it once again. I think we're reaching the record or approaching the record for most throw-ins. 
in a 10 minute stretch. Ball into the box, maybe some trouble now. Columbus Grove, a chance to counter perhaps. Ball sent up to Ock Moody, but taken away by Nicole Siebenek once again, as Siebenek always seems to be right around Ock Moody wherever she goes. Now Kaleida working it up. Audra Hovis to the outside, Laudick. That one just goes harmlessly into the box. Sure, I feel like right now Kaleida really does well when they get the ball in space to the width as they go forward. And if they can keep doing that, I feel like they're gonna have success in this game. Uh, you know, just possessing just a little bit more to width. Hawk Moody plays one outside, but Hipshire was ready for it. Good idea though, she had her teammate Ella Dotson with some space on the left. Again, we, we talked about goal play earlier, but Hipshire has done an excellent job reading the balls that comes through and, you know, not allowing that to get become a threat for their uh, team. So it's a collided throw as they send in another substitute with just over six minutes to play in the first half. Ball in on the ground to Addie Miller. Miller turns. Miller toward goal, but wide left. So some positive movement from Kaleida, but ultimately not a shot on goal. And a goal kick com coming up for Columbus Grove. Yes, and we'll see how this goal kick goes. We saw earlier, uh, you know, as Columbus Grove was kicking set piece, uh, Kaleida did, or did an excellent job of winning it just like that. Maybe giving them an opportunity. And that one goes out. The referee says Collide or Columbus Grove throw. He was wrong. And he's overruled by the center referee. There's still confusion as the AR is insisting on his call. Center referee overrules him once again. <laughs> so now we've got it sorted out. Fans love the, love the call on hey, both sides, of course. <laughs> and the thing is, if you're a referee, you know, you, as a crew, you have to work together. Yes. Right? There's different angles. Sometimes you're sure you see it one way, and the other guy's sure he saw it another, and ultimately you've got to communicate, and that's exactly what they did. Uh, you, you love to see that out of the referee crew. It's a tough job, you know, and uh, these, these guys are talking back and forth about what they saw. And, and, and again, you just want to get the call right for the kids, and you love to see that they uh, came together on a consensus on what the call was. This goal kick, it's a little bit further, but Kaleida's still able to get possession. There was a slight adjustment there. We had a field player taking that kick uh, to take away that uh, ability to attack. And now a shot blocked by Columbus Grove. A lot of space for Addie Miller to work through. Now another one sent toward goal, but out for a goal kick. And then the tide is kind of changing here in the last eight minutes or so. The uh, Kaleida is starting to put a little bit of pressure on Columbus Grove. They're winning the 50-50 balls, and they've got uh, Columbus Grove trapped in their half. This one gets through for Ock Moody, who does a little bicycle kick to send it to midfield. You know, every, every now and then you need your best player to say enough's enough. And yeah. The bicycle, was, that was the call, like, I'm done. Let's get the ball out of our half, ladies. Let's go. <laughs> Ball knocked up in the air. Brought down and ultimately finds the foot of Dotson. Dotson has it taken away. Oh, nice ball right there. That's going to give them some space here. But that space closed <laughs> off. Taken away. It was Emerson Wal or Hulker, excuse me. Throw for Kaleida. Again, just no space for the Wildcats to work through. Good tackle. Fantastic tackle. That was clean all ball. That was Pingle with the tackle. She advances on her own, pops it up on the left side. Dotson 
gets to it first. Dotson knocks it off of a defender, but gets up and gets it back. Now the ball popped up into the air. That's out, and it's a Columbus Grove throw. Nearing the two minute mark. And Columbus Grove substitute ready to check in with two minutes to go. Two minutes. Been a half that hasn't seen too many chances, but some quality soccer out there. This is two teams in a slugfest right now. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, as a coach, you're, you're looking for something positive in the half on. So just even a good quality opportunity. You don't have to finish in a goal, but a good opportunity here just to, you know, let your girls know, hey, what we're doing is working and let's just keep doing it. Kaleida trying to counter, but the touch heavy, and it's knocked away by Jade Raider. Kaleida back with it. Maybe some space on the right. And it's closed off and last touched by Kaleida. So just when you think they're starting to get space, Columbus Grove able to cut it out. Yes, Columbus Grove has done that multiple times today, just taking away space. Um, and that's, that's uh, been a big issue uh, for, the, for Grove right now is how do, I, how do we, you know, like how do we keep doing this as uh, Clyde gets opportunities? Bulldogs with it on the far side, cutting in. This is Ruth Myers, ball toward goal, and Hipshire scoops it up. 30 seconds to play in the first half. The Charles River scoreboard reads 0-0. Zero, zero. And that clearance a bit errant as it falls to Ock Moody, but Kaleida able to close her off. Under 10 to play. Ball goes out of play, and that will do it for the first half. 0-0 zero, zero here in Ottoville as we step aside. Second half between Columbus Grove and Kaleida coming up after this on WOSN. Tonight's scoreboard is sponsored by Charles River in Spencerville. The premier pharmaceutical and chemical research facility in Northwest Ohio is hiring. Visit jobs.criver.com to apply today. Welcome back to Ottoville, where this game is tied 0-0 between Kaleida and Columbus Grove in tonight's playoff matchup on WOSN. Evan Skilleter, Mitch Monfort with you, with Megan Sherrick on the camera. And Mitch, we didn't see any scoring there in the first half, but certainly some decent build-up, some decent play, and ultimately a few good chances. Oh, definitely. There wasn't any scoring, but we, we did see some quality defense, that is for sure. But again, like you said, there was opportunities, and it just didn't pan out yet. So hopefully the second half, you know, one team will separate themselves and, uh, you know, get some more opportunities, put the ball in the back of the net. And pretty much exactly how we ended the first half. The second half starts with a few throw-ins from the far side. Yes, this is uh, definitely something that's going on right now with each team against trying to figure it out. Like, let's keep moving the ball up, but slowly, uh, but surely through throw-ins. And I believe a handball called there, so it'll be a free kick for Columbus Grove, who coming to tonight 11-6 and one. Kaleida 9-5 and 4, but Kaleida did win the matchup between these two in the regular season, 2-0. Ball pops to the outside and ushered out of bounds by the Columbus Grove defense. So what is it about that far side that just <laughs> keeps the ball I haven't Near figured out, line. you know, maybe it's sloped down a little bit that way. Uh, you know. <laughs> I don't know, man. <laughs> I feel like they could open their hips and bring it to this left side, and there, there's a, a space, space to be had over here. And I think whatever team can kind of figure that out, maybe we'll have some better opportunities going forward. And guess what? Ball out of play. Throw in coming from the far side. Mm. 
mean, I would say 80% of the bodies are on that half, you know, so if we can, if you can switch it to the other side, you know, you have one-on-one -on -one matchups over here, opportunity to, you know, find your space and go, go at each other, um, you know, on the weak side here. Kalida trying to find space, working it down the right. Out of play, Kalida throw. Nice quick throw in right there. Gets behind the target though, Columbus Grove able to take it away. Now they'll try to switch sides and they'll do so successfully, but closed off by the Kalida defense. Good aggressive defense there by Kaylin Bachrath. She did an excellent job when we talked about this first half. She wasn't trying to win the ball, but she definitely took away space and made it very difficult for that forward. Nice turn. And too much contact as Akmudi tried to get around Bachrath. A free kick coming from just inside midfield for Columbus Grove. Pingle will put it down. Pingle with the left. Drops it right at that final third, but Kaleida clears. Kaleida now working up the left. It's Audra Hovist. Hovist cuts inside, knocks it off at a defender. The throw in gets behind everybody and cleared away by Columbus Grove. Brought down by the Bulldogs, knocked down the right side. Ball still out of the box, and so the goalkeeper, Cassidy Hipshire, just knocks it out of play to let the defense get back. Ball into the box. Columbus Grove player takes a tumble. Cleared away by Kaleida, but only as far as Columbus Grove's Peyton Norman. And now a chance for Kaleida developing. They get in behind the defense. Here's Hovist, and closed off nicely. Ultimately goes out of play for a collided throw, but had a chance there. Good recovery, though, by the Columbus Grove defense. Yeah, Hovis did an excellent job with her speed to take that away from her. And uh... Ball in the box. Now out. Kaleida trying to keep possession, but that ball goes out of play. That shot ultimately won't matter. Four and a half minutes played here in the second half. And again, in the playoffs, there are no ties, right? So this game, if tied at the end of regulation, will go into an extra time period. Yes, indeed. And again, that changes everything the way you play as a team. And, uh, you know, if we, as we look at the records, Clyde had four ties this year. And uh, so they're, they're kind of used to playing these close games. And, uh, you know, that, that might come to play later in the game. Hopefully we get some opportunities here. But... You know, they, they've been in a few times this year, so they're used to playing these tight games, defensive battles. Columbus Grove clearing it away, and the clearance ends up going backwards, so Kaleida will have a throw as they start to work it toward the box. Ball goes out of play, Columbus Grove throw. The NWC, in which Columbus Grove finished second this season, had some quality soccer, especially at the top of that conference. Bluffton winning the title ultimately. Here's Columbus Grove. We'll get back to that thought here in a second. Ockmoody has it. Ockmoody sends it toward the box. Out comes Hipshire, and she gobbles it up. But outside of Bluffton, this Columbus Grove team, fantastic. Finished second in the NWC. Allen East, that program has really come around in just a short time in existence. And so the NWC and the quality of soccer, they are really starting to pick up. Yeah, yeah you just love to see the uh, the game grow in, the, in this area. And like you said, the the ability for these programs to grow at such a rate is incredible. And, and again, quality soccer, which is great. Uh, it, 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 ooh. I thought that might have been a, a card myself. Yeah, that boot came up pretty high, and so likely a card issued although the referee hasn't there it is yeah. <laughs> takes a second to pull it out make sure he has a chat with the defender first and that's peyton orman that will head to the sideline i believe nope pardon me that 
is Allison Thompson. So a free kick from just beyond the edge of the box for Kaleida. Alex Gardner, the sophomore, will line it up. Gardner toward goal, and she had a teammate there. Ball still in play, sent toward the keeper, and knocked out by Cameron Wrecker. But good play there from Kaleida. Oh, excellent. That was a great ball on frame right there, and just, you know, really lucky that that – that didn't end up in the back of the net, but again, they did an excellent job. And I think Clyde is on to something right here. If we watch this goal kick, they know they can put pressure and maybe win this ball right away and counter. Uh, so let's see what happens here. And this one a bit better than we've seen in the past. It does go out of play, but it at least got over that uh, offensive press, sure. I guess we'll call it. Sure, she got over that initial line and, you know, again, that. That makes uh, you know a little easier for her defense. This ball played into the box, but out comes the goalkeeper, Arian Hefner. Great footwork right there to beat a player one on one. She's got her beat. And now they'll call it back. Good job by the referee, though, allowing advantage. There's contact, but Akmudi still had the ball. Once she was dispossessed, and the referee realized no advantage then he was able to bring it back. Fantastic point as fans and coaches, sometimes we get frustrated, but that was well done, patiently waiting to see what would happen as she had advantage. Comes the free kick. This one sent wide left, and Hipshire again doing a nice job. She has really been decisive in this one, coming off the line, making sure that she is not second guessing herself. Sure, and you almost, you basically have an extra defender on the field with her the way she's playing today. I mean, do, has done an excellent job. And any ball that's been a threat going forward in which she feels like she can make a play, she reads the game well. So almost like a, a double sweeper back there the way sure. she's, she's playing. Now Kaleida working it up the left side. Nice touch pass. A little bit of space here as Addie Miller has it at her feet. Miller to her left. Oh, good help she's defense. She's closed off. As you said, Devani Pringle, or Pingle, excuse me, Stepping over. Looks like the game's starting to open up a little bit here as we uh, get some transition and, and hopefully we might get some opportunities here to see the, the net move here. And the substitute on the far side. Good step from Pingle but not able to control. Kalida sends it in again and back out by Columbus Grove. Magnetic sideline getting yes. some work once again. Well, it, it appears when we get one thrown, we get six, you know, yeah. so you just you have to be patient for the ball to work itself out. Down in the corner, Kaleida able to grab it. Here's a cross, and it's too tight to the keeper as Hefner picks it up. Oh. Now a misstep as Columbus Grove was looking to counter. Columbus Grove was almost behind Kaleida right there. We had to bounce the beat of the defender, then a flick, and just an unlucky touch because she might have been in, and we could have had our first goal of the game. As it stands, still 0-0 on the Charles River scoreboard. Working down the right side, Kaleida, Addie Miller. Miller gets around one defender, but it's cleared away by another, so a throw coming for Kaleida. Ball into Miller. She sends it out. Now the cross toward the box. Ball loose in front of the net. But no one for Kaleida there as Columbus Grove comes over. And now maybe a chance to counter with some space. Here's Ock Moody. Ock Moody in behind the defense, but offside called by the referee. That was a good call. She was a couple feet behind. Um, and, and it was an excellent call. 
if we're going to go back to that throw from Kleiner, they've done it a couple times. They hit the player to the feet. She plays it back, and they immediately cross it in. I'm, I feel like Columbus Grove might have to make an adjustment because they've gotten three or four crosses like that in which they throw it in right back to the person who throws it in, and next thing you know, the ball's getting played across for opportunities. They almost had one. So on a play like that, do you just dedicate someone to covering the inbounder once she throws it in? Yes, yes. You, got, you have to take that away because uh, it's basically a corner kick. They're kind of getting out of every throw in uh, in the final third. Collider need to clear. They do. Thomas Grove able to pick it up, though. Laney Zarsi. Sent into the midfield, Columbus Grove get the first touch. Now popped into the box, and Hipshire there. Expect nothing less. I mean, like we said all night, all day so far, anything that's been played in, she's been ready for it, and, uh, you know, ready to come off her line. The punt a bit low. Looked like Hipshire might have slipped a bit, but still ends up getting where she wanted it to go. Columbus Grove substitute. It's Hawker. On the far side, and it's Bella Schrader coming in for Kaleida. Emerson Hawker looking to throw this in. Nice touch to get around one defender, but another there. Good job sliding over by Nicole Siebenek, who's been tremendous in central defense tonight. Yeah, she's done an excellent job reading the game. I mean, uh, you know. Columbus Grove's got a couple opportunities, but it, it's not because of lack of defense that's going on back there. Columbus Grove has a throw again on the near side as a substitute checks in. Hawker again will do the throwing, trying to find Ock Moody, taken away by Kaleida. Goes out, collide a throw. The referee has been consistent, making sure that each team throwing it in from exactly where they're supposed to. Uh, Alex Gardner, the one called back. You, you don't miss that. Uh, you know, as a coach, I try to tell my girls take five to ten yards, and they can't get five feet. So, I mean, he's doing an excellent job on that. I mean, it's been yeah. fair both sides. Ball quickly into the box. Kaleida, a chance maybe developing. Columbus Grove sends it out for a corner kick, and we've seen a couple nice set pieces from Kaleida so far, none of which have resulted in a goal. And we'll They're sending everybody forward, too, as we look at this. I mean, we got Kaleida's got players on the back post, for, like just options everywhere. So let's see what happens here, see what kind of play they, they run, and see if they get an opportunity. And Hipshire's all the way up at midfield as well. So you talk about push, pushing numbers forward. This one into the side netting. And that can be frustrating as a player. I mean, you get that opportunity. We've only had a few corner kicks either way. And putting the side out of bounds, it's just it's tough to, to watch. you got to pick your head up. And hopefully, you know, as a, a, a teammate can pick her up and let her know, hey, next one, let's get the next play. And we'll get our opportunities. Here's another one of those goal kicks for Columbus Grove. We've seen go short. It's knocked down by Kaleida, but Columbus Grove able to get on the end of it. They work it up the left side, trying to keep it in play. And for once tonight, they are able to they keep did. it from going over and that And a ball line. reversal here on a drop. You love to see it. And as they try to switch fields, it ends up missing everyone and going out for a Kaleida throw. All up the line. Hawk Moody slid over, knocked it toward the defense, and it's knocked out for a throw. Now Bella Schrader. Schrader pops it up toward the defense. And a couple Wildcats were giving chase, but it's sent out by Columbus Grove. Kaleida quickly sending it back in. Laudick found Hovist. Hovis chasing it, and ultimately Columbus Grove playing it safe, knocking it out of play. Let's see if they throw the feet and pass it back for basically another corner. And 
This one's going to sail into the box. Maybe a shot coming. They do knock it backward. Here's the cross back post. Still some trouble and ultimately out for a corner. Like you said, they did throw it longer this time, but they still went back to throw it. And now with some substitutes, we will step aside 23 and a half minutes to play in the second half. Tonight's scoreboard is sponsored by Charles River in Spencerville. A premier pharmaceutical and chemical research facility in Northwest Ohio is hiring. Visit jobs.criver.com to apply today. Welcome back to Ottaville. It's corner kick for Kaleida. This one on the money toward goal and out, but it touches Columbus Grove last. So another corner coming. And my goodness, Mitch, we have seen so many great set pieces from Kaleida come up empty. Yes, you know, and they're getting their opportunities. Unfortunately, they've not finished yet. Uh, but, you know, the, as I say, the day is young. They're, they're, they're keep uh, plugging away. Hopefully they get one here. So they'll do it again from the other side. One player right in front of the goal. Ball to the back post. Brought down by the Wildcats, but with an arm. So it's a handball and a free kick. Wildcats with a nice little stretch of play, but ultimately that scoreboard Still reading 0-0. Zero, zero. Sure, if you're a Columbus Grove defender, you, you know, I, I'm sure you're looking at those set pieces. Starting to get a little nervous, like we got to figure this out and hopefully we can apply pressure, uh, you know, uh, to Clyde and switch the tide of this game right now because I feel like Clyde is kind of controlling the match the second half here. Ball up with Ella Dotson. Dotson takes her time, sends it over to Ock Moody. Moody has it taken away. Nice pressure there from Addie Miller. Ock Moody goes down, play continues. Fans wanted a foul. Including one in particular, evidently, is this one shot toward goal. It's wide and kept in play by the goalkeeper, Hefner. Yeah, you know, I felt like, you know, there was some contact there, but we, we're playing uh, playoff soccer. I didn't think it was too, anything egregious, so. You know, the no call for me, I thought was okay. And let's be honest, this referee has not missed much. He's been on everything. Sure. And he's been consistent, letting some of the letting the clean contact go. Yes. And making sure to keep control of the game. He brought out a yellow card in the first five minutes, for heaven's sake. So he's definitely keeping a pulse on this game, making sure it stays under control. For sure. And I feel like, you know, that foul, no foul, whatever you want to call it, kind of brought out the energy there for a little bit. Let's see who can kind of capitalize on that momentum or, you know, that passion after that, no call. Down the right side go the Wildcats, cut back in. Chance to cross perhaps, here it is, but it's scuffed wide. Clyde is getting those opportunities like they like though. They like to space out wide and go one-on-one -on -one or to cross it in once they get in width. So, you know, I, I, as a coach as Clyde, I, I'm, I'm pretty excited about what I'm seeing. You know, we're doing what we're supposed to be doing. We just we got to put in the back of the net here, and they have 20 minutes left. They've, they've still got some more time to do it. 20 minutes, maybe more. <laughs> yes, depending sir. Depending on how this one ends. Kaleida takes away the free kick. Addie Miller working up the left side. Addie Miller is still on her feet. Addie with the cross. The shot, it's popped up in the air. Columbus Grove has some work to do. It's still in the Kaleida box. And another effort. Knocked away by Columbus Grove, and that was about as close as it gets. A ball free in front of the Grove goal, but no one there to put it home. Yes, indeed. Here we go. We still have some opportunity here. But again, like I said earlier, I mean, they're doing everything they want. They just they haven't finished, and uh, they, we, something's happened between the first half and the second half of the goal kicks because she's definitely getting more length. But I feel like, you know, um, Kaleida's capitalizing on these goal kicks right now. I feel like they feel like they can win these and really quickly counter uh, Columbus Grove. And so far, it's been working. This one gets up to Ock Moody, who brings it down, plays it up the right side, cut out from Kale or by Kaleida. Excuse me, but their attempt to keep it in goes back to Ock Moody, trying to use her wheels. Ock Moody around one defender, has another one to beat. It's touched out of play by the defender, so good job by Ali Kuhlman getting over. But now Columbus Grove sending the throw into the box. Pingle it's carrying it to her left. Pingle with the left-footed shot. 
And Hipshire jumps up and makes the save, but a good look there for Devaney Pingle. She has an excellent left foot we've seen in set pieces so far. And she was getting ready to, you know, get a good look and uh, great defending just to keep pressure on her as she went across the uh, top of the 18. But again, a good opportunity. And, you know, Columbus Grove said enough's enough. We're going to give herself an opportunity here. Moody brings it down, puts it forward. Hipshire comes out, or off the line, excuse me, and again, makes a no mistake. That's exactly what you want. I mean, we've talked about it multiple times, but she is always ready back there, does not get caught in between, and does not get caught watching. Yes, indeed. She's very decisive when she makes her decision. Um, and, you know, that's really, in my opinion, she, she's made a great difference in the, in the, in the game so far because sometimes if you, you have a goalie who's a little tentative, uh, you know, the uh, Columbus Grove probably has a couple more opportunities, um, you know, and her ability to get off her line and read the game so well, not only that, but communicate to her defenders like, hey, this is my ball, uh, get ready, you know, slow down the pace a little bit here. So, you know, you just love to see out of a goaltender. And this one is low, but the touch from Kaleida just sends the ball right back to the goalkeeper, Hefner. That was Audra Hovis who stepped in and made the initial contact with the ball. Now Pingle looking to the outside. Pingle splits some space. Pingle runs right into a defender, though. Cameron Recker takes it away. Now Kaleida trying to counter. Recker gets it back. Recker goes down in too much contact as that arm was extended from Peyton Norman. But I'll tell you what. Not a bad foul right there to slow things down and get the defense back. Sure, I thought it was a quality foul right there. As, uh, as uh, Kaleida was starting to transition, uh, that foul kind of slowed the play up a little bit there, get their defense behind them and, and get ready. But, uh, you know, bad unfortunate touch right there, and that leads to a corner kick. And let's see if Kaleida can continue this pressure that they've had so far this uh, second half. 16.53 on the clock and counting. Corner from the near side. This one again to the back post and over everyone. Looked like maybe a hand, but that's a tough call for the referee in the box in this position. Yeah, I felt like maybe she got her chest and her arms were out there. There's a player down for Kaleida and with no advantage, referee stops play. We'll step aside as well with 16.26 on the clock. It's 0-0 here in Co or Ottoville, excuse me. to be okay after a player was down for Kaleida as we welcome you back to Ottoville High School 0-0. The score here between Columbus Grove and Kaleida. Evan Skilleter and Mitch Monfort with you here today. Megan Sherrick doing the work behind the lens. That's not fair, I don't think. She does a lot of work other than just on the camera. It's set up extraordinaire, making things work. Mitch and I have the easy job. Kaleida working up the right side. Nice little touch pass up overhead. That was Audra Hovist. Now this ball popped up. Some work to do. It goes into the box. And out comes Hefner. She keeps it in play. Nice job by her. Not letting that cross the line. I think it would have been a corner had she let it go. Yes, I think she kind of relived what happened the first half where, you know, she accidentally knocked the touch the ball one and one all the way out. She made a decision this time. I'm not going to make that mistake again. I'm going to get it for sure. Good physical defense. Akmudi goes down. Kaleida trying to counter. Kaleida working it to the outside with some space. Columbus Grove fans again wanting a foul, but again, I just think it's good, clean physical play out there. That one knocked off of Kaleida for a goal kick. That was, that was really clean soccer right there. Good clean tackle in the middle of the field and did an excellent job of winning that ball, which I led into a transition to an opportunity. Got some irritated fans. I'm sorry if that came through the headset. Can't always control what everyone does, right, Megan? <laughs> There's definitely some passion in the fan bases today, which you love to see, you know, but uh, just remember that we're kids and we're, that we're out here watching sports and uh, be respectful of the game. Absolutely. 
Now here's a cross into the box. Ball still free. Shot popped up. Still an issue for Columbus Grove, but the shot goes wide. Hefner couldn't get her hands all the way on it to control, but Kaleida did not have the angle to put it in on frame, excuse me, so it goes out for a goal kick. I feel like Kaleida's smelling opportunities here, and they are swarming as they go forward here, and they're doing a great job putting pressure on the defense. We can see, uh, you know, the Columbus Grove defenders are getting a little tired, and right now Kaleida is, uh, you know, they feel like they got opportunities here. Ball sent toward Kaleida's back line. Akmudi trying to pull it down. Nice tackle there from Akmudi as she sends it up toward her teammate. That's Ruth Myers. Now Columbus Grove with a throw on the near side this time. And the Bulldogs have some substitutes checking in here. Teams vying for possession. Kaleida steps up, clears it to midfield. And another substitute checking in. This is Lauren Laudick on the far side. So the ball will be thrown in on the near. It's Hovist. Nice touch from Kaleida. That's Cameron Recker bringing it down. Recker with some space, but her pass Knocked away by Thompson. I feel like Kaleida does an excellent job with the small touches as they start to move forward. They're not trying to beat them, everybody one-on-one, -on -one, but it's more of a touch, turn, release, and gives them opportunity to kind of move the ball around a little bit, give them opportunity to find that space and the width. Um, and, you know, gives them, gives, that's how they play their game. They've done an excellent job the second half of doing that, controlling the game with the small touches. Teams trying to get possession. Back and forth we go. Ball stays in play. Looks like maybe some tired legs developing yes. up out there as well. I mean, we've seen teams uh, substitute, but I mean, it's been a long season for these kids so far. And you know, they got some wear on the, on the tread there, so. You know, they've they, they got some heavy legs going out on there right now. And, you know, hopefully they can kind of move things around, get a little momentum, get one play. You've got 11 minutes left. And hopefully uh, somebody can put in the back of the net or we're going extra time. And those legs are going to be even heavier as we get to that extra time. Throw coming up for Kaleida after a substitution. Nearing the 10-minute mark here in regulation. Ball gets through a few players to the edge of the box. Cleared out by Columbus Grove. This one goes into the box, and it was a little bit dangerous as Audra Hovis was bearing down, but a good job by Hefner focusing in and grabbing it. Now Columbus Grove trying to counter. Ruth Myers. Past one defender, but a good job by Allie Coleman coming over in support. She ultimately gets it away and clears it off of Columbus Grove for a Kaleida throw. Yes, Coleman did an excellent job reading that play and just really taking that angle to, to win that ball back. Excellent job for her and to transition from uh, defense to offense. Siebenek plays it up the line and out of reach of everybody as Hefner comes over for it. High punt from Hefner. And right now, Clyde is winning those 50 50 balls that Columbus Grove was in the first half, and it's giving them some space and some opportunities here. Clyde trying to work up the right side and gets past everyone for a goal kick. Take a break. 
one more time with just over nine minutes to play. Still 0-0 on the Charles River scoreboard. Charles River in Spencerville is the scoreboard sponsor this evening. The Premier Pharmaceutical and Chemical Research Facility in Northwest Ohio is hiring. Visit jobs.criver.com to apply today. 0-0 zero, zero on that scoreboard here in Ottoville as we have eight and a half minutes to play in regulation for potentially seeing extra time. Each of these teams trying to prevent that though, looking for their first goal of the evening. I mean, everybody likes free stuff, but overtime. And some players take a tumble, and into the box we go. Hipshire comes out and grabs it. Three players, four players on the ground. And some major contact, a collision between an offensive player and a goalkeeper. And sometimes early in a game, you might see a card come out on something like that. But at this point, late in the game, you don't want anything as a referee, I think you don't want to dictate the game, and so you just say, hey, that's too much. Take it easy. Yeah, I felt like that was a great decision. Again, I mean, he's done an excellent job today, kind of controlling the game and not letting it get out of hand. Uh, but again, I felt like there was no no reason to pull a card out or even, you know, I had a little conversation here, make sure everybody's healthy, and let's move on. You can't fault either player for the aggressive play in front of the net either. Definitely. So again, fans, ultra passionate here today. That's one way to describe it, I would say. Definitely oh, one way to describe it. The nice way to say it, I suppose. But again, I think, Mitch, you, you said it earlier. You said it well. Some fans forget what we're here for, right? Yes, you want to win, but high school sports and sports in general does so much more for you as a human being than just wins and losses, De right? Definitely, and I mean, you grow as a player, you grow as a person through these games and uh, the frustration and, you, and the calls even if they don't go your way. You have to learn how to deal with it and, uh, you know, you don't, you don't want to change the game and impact it for the kids. I mean, let them go out here and play and the refs the one in charge, we just enjoy the game here. I think, like you said, we have some tired legs. We're getting some transition opportunities here. Going both ways, we're going to see, you know, who's, who's got more legs in them and, you know, who used their bench better, you know, what kids can you ride a little bit longer. As a coach, you have to make those decisions, and we're starting to see some, some tired legs, and so things are going to open up because of that. And Columbus Grove knocks it. Out of play. Nope, sorry. It was off of Kaleida, so a Columbus Grove throw. Now cleared away by the Bulldogs, so Kaleida will have a chance to throw on the near side. Again, these two teams matched up at the end of the season, and Kaleida won that one 2-0. Hard to beat a team twice in any particular season in any particular sport. Definitely, and as you get in the playoffs, things change so much. You know, uh, what worked the first game might not work the second game because there's been sure. adjustments and uh, you know different rotations or different matchups as a coach you liked. And so I think that's what we're seeing out here today. That they played and they played such a hard game that there's been some adjustments. So we're here at a zero-zero tie, and you love to see the effort and the even the sportsmanship, there's been opportunities where they've ran each other over physical soccer, and you watch a girl pick each other up. You just love to see that uh, displayed on the pitch. Now Kaleida moving it into the final third. A heavy touch, but the ball's still at the edge of the box. Kaleida with it. It's Bella Schrader. Schrader gets it back. Schrader shoots right into the foot of a defender, but still has possession. Working it all the way back. Good patient buildup. 
Yeah, she's very patient on the ball, does an excellent job of controlling the speed of the attack. When she, when she wants to go, it's time to go, but there's no rush in her, and I, and I enjoy that as a coach. Good Play shield. In midfield, you're right. Absolutely a good shield as Kaleida gets around, but referee said there was a hook by Cameron Wrecker, and again, can't fault him. I mean, you could kind of see that arm come around. He was right there in the middle of that play, so. And, and no hesitation. I thought maybe there was foul going the other way, but he's talking, she's grabbed the back of the jersey to use advantage, and he's right on top of it, like you said earlier. He's, he has not made, you know, any, in my opinion, questionable calls. Well, Kaleida trying to ping it forward. It's behind the defense, but no one for Kaleida there is it. Drops right into the paws of Hefner, who quickly sends it to midfield. Pingle brings it down. Columbus Grove with possession. Now down the right side. Ruth Myers giving chase. Myers cuts in. Myers drops it back to Zarcy. Zarcy sends it to the teeth of the defense, but no one in red there, so it's cleared away by Kaleida. Columbus Grove gets back on the end, but only briefly. Addie Miller takes it away, but not able to string together possession as she gets it back. But referee says an arm touched the ball, and it'll be a free kick for Columbus Grove. And I feel like Columbus Grove was really fortunate there. She missed kicked that ball. She had two offensive girls on the left side that were not marked at all, that which really would have gave some opportunity for Kaleida to, to find some space and go one-on-one uh, -on, -one on the goalie. You know, Pingle gets possession. Hawk Moody, a little bit of space, but now closed off by two defenders. Gets past both, takes a shot, and Hipshire there. Not enough behind the shot, but great footwork from Hawk Moody, who hasn't found a ton of space in this one. Sure, you know, uh, Kaleida's done an excellent job. Kind of containing her, just boxing around her, and right there it didn't matter. She went through the box, and, uh, you know, that gave them opportunity. Probably one of their better looks they've had all day. Sent out of play. Sometimes I think that parents should try refereeing. <laughs> we, we wouldn't have the shortage, you know, it would be fantastic. <laughs> we wouldn't, as a, it, it's such a hard job and uh, it's taken for granted sometimes the amount of time these ladies and gentlemen put into the game. No question. Columbus Grove able to dispossess Kaleida, and they're going to try to counter on the far side. Ball sent up to Ella Dotson, cut out by Kaleida. They'll get possession. They're working down the right now. Here's a touch pass, but no one there. I think they expected Laudick to make a run, but her wheel's just not there. Perhaps a product of those tired legs like we've talked about. Yes, indeed. She had an opportunity for an overlapping run to just go right in the space because, again, I feel like we talked about the wings were there attacking. I feel like pretty pretty good at and it's tough when you're tired those legs are heavy it's tough to make that run you know it's you can make the run when the, the ball's on your foot but to anticipate with heavy legs is very hard very very hard now Columbus Grove nice job by Ock Moody sliding in and keeping possession it is taken away by Kaleida they'll have a throw on the far side as we're under 30 seconds to play in regulation can someone get a goal here before the final whistle or will we have extra time? Ball goes out again, down to 10 seconds. Surely doesn't seem like enough time to work it toward goal. Six on the clock, cleared away, and it will be zeros at the end of regulation. We will head to extra time. But before that, a break and a word from our sponsors. We'll be right back with extra time after this on WOSN. Tonight's scoreboard is sponsored by Charles River in Spencerville. The premier pharmaceutical and chemical research facility in Northwest Ohio is hiring. Visit jobs.criver.com to apply today. We welcome you back to Ottoville High School where that scoreboard reads 0-0 as we enter extra time here 
at Ottoville between Kaleida and Columbus Grove. The winner advances in the state playoffs. And I'll tell you what, Mitch, that was a fantastic 80 minutes of soccer that resulted in a 0-0 score. Yes, they, both sides playing hard, doing everything they can, you know, to keep the game close. And they did an excellent job. They kept the ball out of the net. Now we're going to find out who can put one in first. And if whoever does, you know, walks away with the, uh, the win today. Kaleida wearing the white uniforms, now working right to left on your screen, trying to work up the right side, and ball ultimately out of play. Now this is a golden goal scenario. So the first team to score in extra time is the winner. It's two 15-minute periods, if no one scores, with a five-minute intermission between those two. If the score is still tied at the end of those 30 minutes, then we'll have penalty kicks, and we'll talk more about that if we get to that point. Yes, sir. And again, like you said, it's golden goal, so defense priority, of course. But if you can put it in, you, you win. And so we talked earlier about having heavy legs. We might start to see maybe a little bit more possession, less kicking the ball so directly forward, uh, causing everybody to run out of their out of their legs, you know, so we can find some feet here, possess the ball a little bit, and maybe ping the ball around. Uh, you know, give yourself an opportunity to score a goal. Ball played off of Columbus Grove. Kaleida will throw. And really, if you were to ask the question, Mitch, which of these teams has had better chances? I'm not sure we'd be able to answer that one either. Maybe Kaleida, seeing as how they had a few free kicks or free uh, set pieces, excuse me, at the end of that half. But what would you say? I, you know, I, I was going to lean a little bit more towards Kaleida, uh, you know, and it, it, just because of the way they play. Well, here's an opportunity right now as we speak. Uh, but as we, we they played it with, they've done an excellent job finding those opportunities. Uh, Columbus Grove is getting had a few here and there. Uh, they just haven't had the ability to kind of link their passes together to get a, a, a dangerous threat too many. Um, you know, of course, Akmudi had an opportunity late game. But uh, I would lean a little bit towards Kaleida. It does not mean the game is being dominated by Kaleida, though. It's pretty evenly matched so far. Teams trying to get possession together on that far side. Not a down by Columbus Grove. Sent down the right side. Good pass as Ock Moody put it again over her head. We saw a bicycle, a full bicycle kick clearance from her earlier in this game. That time she kept her feet, but still put it up over her head and won a throw for Columbus Grove. That acrobatic play did an excellent job switching the field for her team, giving them an opportunity to get the ball in space here. Ball to Ock Moody. Ock Moody on the outside, tries to drag it back. Ultimately does make a pass into the box, but she is down on the dirt right now. And she not able to get back up, at least for the moment. Referee still hasn't stopped the clock, and now he does. So we'll step aside as well. 11.18 on the clock. They'll take a look at Ock Moody as you take a look at some of our sponsors. Right back. Corner kick coming up for Columbus Grove as we return. It gets over everyone's head, including the goalkeeper, but it's cleared away. And by the way, at the break, Lauren Akmudi able to get up. She walked over to the sideline. It appeared as though she'll be okay. We'll see if she gets back into this game. But play continues without her. First time she's been out of the game so far this evening. Columbus Grove trying to get the ball toward the goal. Cleared away by Kaleida. And we, we, we can kind of see right now Columbus Grove is kind of putting a little bit of pressure on you. Me personally, as a coach or a player, I see my best, my leader go out. Now it's time for me to take over. Somebody's got to step up, and you, and you love to see that. The ball popped up into midfield, brought down by Columbus Grove, cut out by Addie Miller.
Oh, nice touch right there. Can she set something up? Oh, unlucky. This pass gets all the way up to Miller. Miller carrying on her own. Cuts it inside. Miller with some space to move. Miller runs into a defender but gets it right back. Now runs into another. Kalida still giving chase in the final third. Ball still in that final third. Ball still on the line, now knocked out by Columbus Grove. Ball just stopped right there on the line as both players were staring at it. Now out of play for a goal kick and Hawk Moody ready to check back in. So a sight for sore Columbus Grove eyes. Let's see if Kalida can capitalize on this goal kick that you know, like we talked about earlier. She's made an adjustment, see what she wants to do, but see if they can keep a trap down here and, you know, really apply that pressure. Neither team really able to get good possession here as there's a fight for possession on the far side. Now knocked out of play, and it's off of Kaleida. Columbus Grove will throw. Nine twenty on the clock in this first extra time period. Kaleida working it down the right, and they take a bad touch, and it goes out for a throw. And Kaleida threw it in, but it's actually Columbus Grove ball, so they'll re-throw, but it'll be the red to toss it in. Up over the defense. And that one ultimately, oh, I thought it went out, it stays in. Play continues. Kaleida knocks it away, Ock Moody there. Kind of moving back into a midfield position. She's gonna take it past two defenders, maybe past another. Now runs into a third or maybe even the fourth defender. Columbus Grove still with possession though. Columbus Grove, a chance possibly to shoot, but a good job Sliding over in defense was Allie Kuhlman, and Kuhlman's clearance went off of Columbus Grove and out for a goal kick. We, we seen Achmedy kind of go back to the midfield role, and that kind of gave her a little head of steam going towards that defense, which as a coach, I kind of enjoy that more for her. Uh, but it gave Columbus Grove an opportunity. Now they've got the ball trapped down here, and can collide a counter? Still the Bulldogs in possession. Only momentarily, though, Kaleida playing it forward. Just to the Grove back line, Alex, Allison Thompson. Thompson's pass for Ock Moody. Ock Moody gets on the end. Ock Moody, good footwork, and she's fouled. Thought maybe the referee would play advantage there, but he pulls it back. There's definitely opportunity for advantage. She beat her defender, but Again, no no critiques here. We'll, we'll no, go with no, it. No. You know, he's, he made the call. And that's the way it goes sometimes. Give us an opportunity here. Perhaps for Columbus Grove, this does feel like the advantage. This one sent toward goal, and a good job by Hipshire once again. 7.05 and counting in this first extra time period. Hipshire access toward midfield. Good punt. Kaleida working it up the left. This is Gardner. Goes out, Ruth Myers thought about picking it up, but instead it'll be grabbed by Emerson Halker as a bunch of substitutes get ready to check back into this game. All down the line, Myers gets around the defense. Myers, the cross, and didn't quite have the hips turned enough to get anything behind it. She did an excellent job splitting that, though, to get through those two defenders like that. And, uh, you know, just couldn't get her hips around and play it through. But she's going to be a special player only as a sophomore. Does an excellent job beating those two. And, you know, eventually 
Uh, she'll figure that out, and uh, or just just had a missed touch. But she she likes the competition. Uh, she likes to compete out there and love to see it. And Akmudi tried to put it into the box, but puts it off Addie Miller's back instead. Miller did not like the way that one <laughs> felt. Can't blame her. That was about six feet away from a pretty hard kick. Yeah, that was uh, you know, had a little bit of pace on it, you know, and she's going to feel that tomorrow later in the game even. Ooh, set piece right here outside the 18. Excellent job, Clyde, of slowing this down, intentionally not giving her the 10 yards to kind of give space, time for that goalie to be ready in the back. But excellent job, good coaching over there, make sure that that, that penalty happened. We're going to stop play as quickly as possible so we can get set up defensively. But this is a good opportunity here for uh, Columbus Grove. Referee marks off the 10 yards. Ock Moody has it lined up. This is a spot where she could certainly put it on frame. She sends it back post instead. Knocked down by Columbus Grove, put toward the goal, and it's wide right. Just wide. I mean, we're talking by inches. That was a great opportunity for Columbus Grove. And, you know, again, we that was a great set piece. Good decision to play instead of a shot, you know. Well done on both ends. It actually, it took a deflection off of Kaleida, so a corner coming up for the Bulldogs. And this one up and ends up curving in play. So if the ball starts out of play and swings in, then it's still considered out of play. So a goal kick for Kaleida, but I think, like you said, good set piece before that. Very dangerous situation. I was a little nervous. I thought Hipshire might have read that wrong, that it was because it went in play, but obviously she knows better than I do. That was a great, you know, I mean, she, I've been very impressed with her all game so far. But to know that ball went out and, you know, and, and it, just very smart IQ as a goalie, just to, you know, read the game so well. So. But as we're in this sudden death or – overtime, set elimination. Columbus Grove has really stepped it up this first 15 minutes, you know, and uh, do they have the legs to continue or can Kaleida counter? Been a lot of possession from Columbus Grove as Kaleida trying to get it back, but ultimately taken away by Carson Garmotter. Played down the right. Into the box. Columbus Grove putting a ton of pressure on this back line. Garmater gets it. Garmater out right to Myers. Myers cuts inside, has a little space, and tries a cross, but it's knocked away nicely by Kaleida. I believe that's Kalen Bachrath down there. It is indeed. That was, that was some of the best possession we've seen at Columbus Grove. That ball was played to their forward, laid back, and then across. And, Gave them opportunity to find the space going forward. Adjustment and throwing. That throw slipped out of the hands of Siebenek. She's able to get it back. Hawk Moody with some space in midfield, tries to switch fields. And I think she scuffed it a bit off the foot, so it goes out for a collide of throw. It's a really good thought. If she gets that ball correctly on her foot, they might have had an opportunity on the back post on a nice diagonal run. Two minutes, two minutes remaining. Two minute warning here in the first extra time period. Again, we'll have a second one to follow this one if a goal is not scored. Then after that, if a goal isn't scored in the next 15, it'll be Penalty kicks, but right now Kaleida into the box. Kaleida dribbles to the top. Here's a shot, and it's cleared away by Columbus Grove. And again, some tired legs trying to run after it. It is out of play and a throw for Kaleida. 125 on the clock. And it gets past everyone out for a goal kick. Kick ends up being picked up by Alex Gardner. The shot off the crossbar and behind the goal harmlessly. What a great look from that distance. And we've talked about, I've talked about it multiple times. 
those goal kicks are somewhat almost like a set piece for them. They, they are feasting on it, and, you know, let's see if they can get another opportunity here. This one played to the outside. Kaleida able to get on the end of it, but a heavy touch knocked away by Columbus Grove. 30 seconds to play in the first extra time period. Ball sent into Addie Miller. Miller tries to cross, but it's knocked down. Ball out of play. Kaleida will throw with 18 seconds. Columbus Grove trying to clear. Pingle around a defender. Has it taken away, but only six on the clock. She gets it back, and that will do it for the first extra time period. We'll have the second one coming up after another break. You're watching High School Playoff Soccer on WOSN. Tonight's scoreboard is sponsored by Charles River in Spencerville. The premier pharmaceutical and chemical research facility in Northwest Ohio is hiring. Visit jobs.criver.com to apply today. Welcome back for the start of extra time period number two here in Ottoville. Columbus Grove and Kaleida tied at zero apiece. Evan Skilleter, Mitch Bonfort with you today. Megan Sherrick on the camera and set up Mitch, not much going for Kaleida in that first extra time period, but just at the end, starting to put something together. We'll see if they can keep that possession up, perhaps. Yes, indeed. I mean, they had an excellent opportunity towards the end of that overtime and extra time, I should say, and it just hopefully that it can build off that. But, I mean, what a shot from the distance. Just unlucky, unfortunate, but uh, like kind of like the first OT, Columbus Grove is applying some pressure right now. Ball crossed to the middle, Kaleida able to clear. Ball all the way back and then a heavy touch. Ball into the box, Hipshire right there as she has been all night. So this is a golden goal extra time. One goal, you might know it as sudden death. If a goal occurs, the team that scored is the victor and almost the chance for Kaleida, but the pass not able to get through. That was Lauren Laudick on the outside with some space. But if it's tied after this extra time period, we go to penalty kicks, which is one of the most exciting but stressful concepts in sports. This one into the box, Ockmoody giving chase. Columbus Grove gets on the end. Here's a shot, Hipshire there. Ball almost goes out of play, but She's able to keep it in. Again, Columbus Grove is kind of finding the rhythm here as we get later in the game. And uh, it's kind of fun to watch them work that ball around and figure out how we're going to move the ball towards goal and, and get those opportunities to score. Handball called. About 40 yards from goal. So we'll have a free kick. Pingle will place it down. Got a nice left foot as a freshman, just really does an excellent job serving the ball. She's gonna put this one right on frame and it's, well, it's a little bit wide. From here, it looked like it was on frame. Hipshire was right there though, able to usher it out. But I think there are a bunch of hearts in this stadium that skipped a beat. <laughs> oh my goodness, she does it again. I thought, I thought that might be in. Uh, just, she reads the game so well as a player, very smart. Here's a shot from Ock Moody, blocked nicely by Allie Kuhlman. Pingle steps up, clean contact, play continues. Here comes a counter, can she put it through? Miller closed off, good job stepping up by Jade Roeder. Great defense, if that ball gets behind again, we might have problems, uh, you know, if you're on this side of Columbus Grove. I mean. They've done it a couple times, just avoiding near disaster by sheer pressure. Ball played down the right, but Laudick not able to get there. They send that ball in right to Addie Miller, but Miller not able to control. Now Siebenek. Ball out of play, Columbus Grove throw. Ball out 
once again. Lady Dogs will throw again. Doing an excellent job working that sideline like we talked before, yeah. just chipping it up. Just We're going to walk this ball, kind of keep you trapped in your half. You can't score if we're on your end. Now they send it out for a collide throw. And that sideline just eating up the <laughs> soccer ball. Still in play, both teams fighting for possession. Now Kaleida, but only briefly, that Columbus Grove defense again doing a nice job, allowing no space for Kaleida once they have the ball. Nice touch, but Kaleida able to cut it out. It's Gabrielle Brinkman. That ball goes out off of Columbus Grove. Ball sent down the line, out of play once again. You love to see the student yeah. section. I tell you what, uh, great support for these kids today. Uh, you know, all these young, uh, you know, their they're, uh, high school classmates out here uh, celebrating them and supporting them is something fun to watch. Good job there by Columbus Grove and Alyssa Koch. Cook, excuse me. Great hustle, what a battle right there. And eventually referee calls the foul. Pingle winning the free kick for her squad. Not a bad foul though again. Yeah. Well done. Pingle with the left, low driver. Knocked into midfield by Kaleida, but another errant touch and Columbus Grove takes it back. Hard pass up to Ock Moody. Hard to handle that, and Kaleida takes it away. More physical play on the far side. This one popped up into the box, takes one hop, and caught by Hipshire. Collider trying to play it to the outside. As we can watch, see what happens here. If they can build a little momentum on the uh, Collider side. Again, extra time's been Columbus Grove's time. And, you know, it's, uh, it's glad. It's good to see that, like, competition, you know, that they want to compete and they're tired. They have heavy legs. Uh, but that they're able to have, they're able to go to the reserves and you know give themselves that uh, extra energy to opportunity to score a goal. It's a free kick for Kaleida. Cameron Recker will put it down, and not a bad spot here for Kaleida. But you can see, not really pushing a ton of numbers forward, trying to make sure there's no counter. And that shot scuffed wide. It was a good. Free kick taken, placed right in front of the box, or right in front of the goal, excuse me. Audra Hobus just not able to get a good foot on it. Uh, that was a perfect ball, put on a dime, and just unlucky that she was not able to get that cleanly because she was going to hits towards goal. It looked like a good opportunity to score. Good goal kick, but sent out of play, 722 and counting here in this extra time period, just halfway through. Player takes a tumble from Kaleida. Oh, couple players there. Can Kaleida be the spoiler again? Because again, I feel like right now, Columbus Groves kind of has control of this game, but Kaleida had another opportunity, just like they did the first over or extra time. And if you're joining us late, we've mentioned it a few times, Kaleida, a 2-0 victor over Columbus Grove in late season action, late regular season action. But here not able to get anything into the net. So we find ourselves locked up at zero on the Charles River scoreboard. 6.20 to play before penalty kicks.
Substitution for Columbus Grove. They'll throw it in down the right side, and again, that ball just goes out of play. No one actually took a touch there. One's off of Columbus Grove. Here we go. Yep, Collider not able to get possession. Yeah, Columbus Grove is going to be able to uh, have an opportunity to find that space. Oh, there we go. Collider in behind him now. This is Audra Hovist. Hovist has it taken away but wins a corner. Looked like Columbus Grove. You were trying to allude to it. was going to counter. Collider got it back and a nice pass up to Hovist and now a corner. Yeah, we just went from one team in space to the other team in space very quickly and you know, good opportunities here to get a look here. That's all you want as your team, just get a look, we can finish it. Here's a great chance on these set pieces that they did so well in regulation. Four players on the edge of the box, one in front of the goal, one on the near side. Here it goes over everyone's head, still in the box. They drop it back, they'll cross again, but this one out of play. Oh, they are so patient in that final third. Some people would panic trying to force a goal, but they would rather play it slow and out wide. An excellent job again to get another opportunity after the first one did not uh, do what they wanted here. Ball brought down by Kaleida, but cleared away by Jade Roeder of Columbus Grove. That goes out of play on the far side. 4.15 left in this extra time period. Moody sends it ahead. Ruth Myers took a touch. Now Kaleida pinging it into the other side of the field. Good patience there as a the player went flying. That was Laudick trying to knock it down and they scooched a pass underneath there. Now a nice diagonal played to the corner, but just out of reach of Myers. Ock Moody does an excellent job distributing the ball in the midfield. And, uh, they're gonna, they're finding some space, and I feel like that's maybe why they have their rhythm a little bit more. Uh, you know, as they started sliding her in the midfield after she got banged up a little bit in the first uh, extra time. Ball knocked off of the Bulldogs. Wildcats will throw as we near the three-minute mark. Some more substitutes checking in. Kaleida knocks it down the line. It stays in play. Good fight for possession on the far side. Kaleida with it at the moment, Addie Miller. Now some space for Pingle. Pingle puts it on her right foot, naturally a lefty. Now tries to send it outside, took a touch off of Kaleida. Still in play, chance to cross. Here it is in front of the goal, knocked down and it goes out of play. So a corner coming up for Columbus Grove. Great opportunity with about two minutes left to go in this game. And, you know, you would, this is what they need here. We got Pingo on the left foot. Can we put something in the air? We can put it in the back of the net. Two minutes, two minutes remaining. Pingo to the top of the box. Brought down, knocked up in the air. Kaleida clears it only as far as Jade Roeder. Now Auk Moody. Auk Moody looking for space. Takes a shot as she falls back. Shot was blocked. Then this one sent out of play for a goal kick. Ninety seconds to play. Ball brought down by Addie Miller. And Miller's pass went right to Columbus Grove's Ella Dotson, but she's not able to get possession. Now Miller, ball takes a touch 
off of Columbus Grove. Still in play, good physical contact there in front of us. 54 seconds. Great effort right there. Well done, good win. Just need to find, there we go, let's see some possession here. Hawk Moody plays it down the right side. Hipshire comes off the line and she will be the first one there. Expect nothing less. I mean, again, she comes off her line and really, you know, control that game on the back end for uh, Kaleida. Kaleida trying to push it forward. Just 20 seconds on the clock. And a great job by Columbus Grove getting around the Kaleida pressure. Still maybe a chance though. This is Miller. Miller plays it in. Eight seconds on the clock. Ball cleared away. And it won't be nearly enough time to send it in. We will have penalty kicks. We'll explain it to you and give you all the scenes from Ottoville when we return. You're watching high school playoff soccer on WOSN. Thank you to our scoreboard sponsor this evening, Charles River in Spencerville. The premier pharmaceutical and chemical research facility in Northwest Ohio is hiring. Visit jobs.criver.com to apply today. That scoreboard, after many minutes of play, I haven't done the math actually, 120 minutes, 120 minutes. I suppose, is still at 0-0. And so these two schools, will go to penalty kicks. And penalty kicks, if you're unfamiliar, it's best of five. And after five, if the score is still tied, then we will have essentially a sudden death baseball style, which basically means both teams will have a chance to kick if one misses and the other makes. This one is over. So, it will be Columbus Grove to kick first. Lauren Ockmoody sets it up. The goalkeeper for Kaleida is still Cassidy Hipshire. Ockmoody shoots and it goes off the post. And Columbus Grove misses their first attempt, which brings up Kaleida and number 15, Ali Coleman. Just tough luck right there. Just a great looking hit. Just unfortunately clipped the post square and it did not go in for her, but you know, that's the kind of the way the game has been. It's been tough to crack, you know, a goal here. A lot of pressure on these young ladies in these situations here. No question. So Ali Coleman up. Ariane Hefner, the goalkeeper. Coleman puts it to the right. Hefner gets the wrong way. And Kaleida, after round one, is up 1-0. Great placement of the shot. You know, didn't strike it too hard. Just put it right where it needs to be hit and like she's done it before. And my guess is as a coaching staff, they've done an excellent job working with these kids on practicing penalty kicks and getting ready for these situations. Now stepping up is Jade Roeder. Roeder a defender. Goalkeeper must keep part of their body on that back line. This one goes up and over. So two misses for Columbus Grove, neither were saved. And now Kaleida a chance to really put the pressure on. It'll be Addie Miller to step up. And we, we talked about this having heavy legs and sometimes those legs being so tired affect you as you go in and take these penalty kicks. So this is a big opportunity here uh, for Kaleida, you know, to go up two nothing here in these penalty kicks and uh, really put some pressure on Columbus Grove. Here's Miller, steps up, shoots past the goalkeeper. Elida now up two, or Kaleida, excuse me, up 2-0. <laughs> I'm thinking about your lady dogs. We would like to be up 2 nothing as well, <laughs> yeah. but you know, well done for Kaleida. Uh, you know, uh, she ha she's able to put in the back of the net. So now Columbus Grove, their work cut out for them. Carson Garmater to take for the Bulldogs. She doesn't have to make it 
to stay alive, but certainly a miss would not be great for the Bulldogs. Garmotter steps up, shoots, and into the goal. Well placed. Hipshire picked the right way. Oh, Hipshire was up in those corners, and I, I don't know that any goalkeeper is going to make that save, but I tell you what, way to be you know, confident in yourself as a penalty kick taker, uh, you know, and knowing that you're going to put it in the back of the net. Well done on both those ladies' parts. 2-1. Kalida on top, a chance to go up 3-1 after three rounds. Up steps Audra Hovist. Hovist with the shot over Hefner's head. And it's 3-1 after three rounds. Addie Miller, Ali Kuhlman, and Audra Hovist all converting for Kalida. And now this is a must make for Columbus Grove. They need to make their remaining two and Kalida needs to miss the remaining two for the Bulldogs to stay alive. This is Ella Dotson. Dotson steps up, shoots, and it goes in off the hand of Hipshire. So Dotson keeps the Bulldogs alive. I mean, Hipshire has been dynamic back in that net, but what a shot again. You know, Columbus Grove is making this very hard on her, and she is getting, you know, a piece or making it very difficult on them. So, yeah, this is, uh, you know, the opportunity to put the game away right now. You know, relax, find the back of the net here. If this goes in, Kalida will win. Lana Grime takes the shot. It goes in, and that is a victory. Wait. Yeah, that's it. Well the referee done. does say game over. I thought he had blown to say it does not count, but it does. And so Kalida, four for four on penalty kicks. Allie Coleman, Addie Miller, Audra Hovis, Lana Grime, all making their penalty kicks and knocking Columbus Grove out of this tournament, beating them for the second time this season. Yeah, I mean, that was an excellent job today. I mean, both teams really left it on the line, and you'd hate to see it go to PKs about well-deserving. You put all four in, and, and they were all great shots. So congratulations to Kaleida, well-deserved, and great work this season so far. Keep it up. Kaleida wins this district final. They move on to face Madeira, a school down in Cincinnati. They'll play them in Wapak in the regional semi. Want to thank our scoreboard sponsor one more time, Charles River in Spencerville. See more about them at criver.com. Want to thank our camera lady extraordinaire, Megan Sherrick. Also want to thank the Ottaville Athletic Department for their hospitality this evening. One more time, it's penalty kicks and a victory for Kaleida here as they make four. Columbus Grove makes just two. For Mitch Monfort, I've been Evan Skilleter signing off. Have a great night and God bless.